I'm grateful that there's a movement that's trying to help get a tent city going. We're desperate for a tent city. We uh, a lot well, of... right now the case as it stands, it's illegal to have a tent during the day. Uh, and other people in other cities must think that it's a miracle that we have tents at night. And many people are wondering why I would still not think it's good enough. Uh, and then they would just have to think for a moment to all the, the arbitrary inconvenience of it. But we don't need to go on why it's nonsense to have no tents during the day. So right now, we have Kathy and Irene, the lawyers that oversaw the last big case that saw the right to sleep recognized by the Supreme Court and the subsequent allowance of tents in Victoria at night. And these same lawyers have gotten back on board uh, and right now, the, they, I can't go do it myself. I've already been to the Supreme Court and lost, oh, and I've okay, been to yep. the Appeals Court and oh, lost. Oh, good to know. And so the, the lawyers uh, have this other fellow who had recently got a ticket uh, yep. for camping, and he didn't even have a tent. He wasn't actually in violation, and so uh, he's challenging it. He shows up in court in September to, for sure, have the Crown say, oh, we stayed the case, don't worry about it. Uh, that's their, their major, one of their major forms of harassment is get people to sign conditions and such and then and then whatever say that they don't have to go to court and want to be praised for it. Anyhow, yeah. uh, that's where it stands. Uh, I, it's, 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 uh, it seems like a fragile precipice. I, I don't know if the, the lawyers can do what's necessary and so the whole time I got my whole shtick of not eating in jail, always waiting in the wings if I can't see any other recourse. So we'll see what happens with the lawyers and collecting affidavits and, and gosh I would certainly like to see a lot of more people with a lot more concern about this. We had a homeless couple who were criminalized who started the one across from Pandora Green there on Pandora Green. Say that what you just say to me. And you're a homeless person in Victoria and you helped get that going on the boulevard right on. Thank no, you. I, my husband and I went out and collected 10 tents and yeah. we handed them out every night and collected them every morning until the morning the police came along and stole the bag of poles for all the tents. So the next night we went out and bought bungee cords and hung them up from the trees. The tents were, you know, bungeed up without poles the next night and then they went and uh, destroyed other things. Yeah, they just yeah. ruined it all. But I had that going for a long time, man. And every time they would like get somebody uh, doing drugs in the tent so they could actually confiscate the tent, Sean and I would go out and get two more tents the next night. Yeah, great. right on. Good work, good work. A very diverse housing because we're not all the same and our needs are very different. Um, you know, some people might be comfortable in a condominium style house or an urban apartment. Um, I think other people their ideas of home are very different. The one thing I do think that um, would be important to have that discussion, you know, with each group that the housing is for is what kind of communal um, space will we create? Because regardless of what our individual suites might look like, if it's that type of housing, it doesn't necessarily have to be though. Um, where would we create the space to come together? Because without that, then we don't really have community. And uh, I know people have created community wherever they can, you know, so you'll find a way, right? But I thought that was powerful. They were close to their services. They could keep an eye out for each other. They felt safe and secure. The police attacked it immediately because, as Mike Russell said in the film Taking the Fall and Rising, that uh, they are dictated to by the government right now, conservatives. So we do live in a dictatorship and it takes a police officer to let us know that. I find it interesting. Um, he, he has a lot of respect from a lot, many on the street. So that says a lot. Um, maybe he's giving us a little in. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they dictate to the police uh, that these things are illegal and they must follow them around. So they're being told what to do and they're following their orders. So we need to go to where the orders are, I suppose.